window. Smoke in here. Let's rip the head off this thing. Did you get that in the shot? Felt pretty good from here. Turn around, Will. <laughs> wow. Yeah. All right, guys, today we are here with Mike's truck from Arizona. This is an amazing, amazing truck. It's probably the cleanest second gen we've ever had in our shop to date. Everywhere he goes, people offer to buy it from him all the time. He parks at a restaurant, gas station. He's getting offers to buy this truck daily, and you'll see why. It's an amazing vehicle. Um, this is one of our original customers. He bought an AFC Live from us right after we opened. Like He bought one of the original, original AFC Lives, and he's up. He's updated the newer version since then, but this has been a truck we've seen a lot. Um, it makes a lot of power. You know, this thing's got uh, compound turbos on it, an engine we built for it, um, and it's just awesome. Uh, Mike's been watching a lot of our videos about our, our ported heads we've done lately. He's seen the ones that the, what Will's been working on, our 12 valve ported heads, and he wanted to put a ported head on his truck to see what it will do. We originally built this to be a tow vehicle, and ever since then it's morphed into more and more and more power. So we're going to do a really fun video. We're going to put this truck on the dyno, see what it makes as is, and then we're going to swap the head. We're not going to change anything else, and we're going to see what kind of power difference we make, what kind of characteristics we make. Usually a turbo, a turbo system, turbocharger, will push the air through. Uh, you may not make a huge power gain if you don't change turbos uh, with the head, but you might. Uh, I'm excited to see what happens, but I do anticipate better spool up, way better manners, more torque, and, and we may see a decent power jump. This turbo system consists of a 362 and a 472, both Borg Warner SXE chargers. Um, technically, that should be a 1,000-ish horsepower capable. He's not there yet, but he's running this as a street truck. The timing's not radical. Starts easy, runs nice, runs clean. He drove it here from Arizona, seven hours. He drove it up here, we're gonna dyno it. It's just an amazing do-it-all truck. All right, so I wanna talk a little bit about what's been done to this truck. So this is, like I say, a custom engine build for him by us. 2017, I think, is when we built this engine. He said he's got about 20,000 miles on this build. Runs cherry. It towed his fifth wheel awesome. And then we just kept on adding, adding power, turbos, injectors. And so now it's just really, really sweet. Things he's had to do for this. I mean, obviously the engine is built for the power level. It's actually probably higher power level than we built the engine for, but it's still working pretty well. Um, the blow-by is minimal. It's just a really sweet motor. He's got a nice 650cc, 215 horsepower pump on here. A lot of power potential in that thing. Uh, the compound turbos, like I said, are 62 over 472 Borg Warner SXE. Um, he's got some of our power driven diesel boots on. He's making 95 pounds of boost on the street. It's a lot of pressure and holding up well. We actually blew up his intercooler a couple years ago. So this has a, a Mishimoto intercooler on it to, you know, solid tanks and it holds the pressure a little bit better than the stock unit. So got to upgrade the intercooler. But really, it's not that crazy of a build. It's just a good, a good solid build. ARP 625s. Um, it's got Dodge connecting rods in it. It still has the fact, I mean, I think they're the, we got them shot peen, maybe a little upgraded rods, but still a Dodge, you know, or a Cummins, not a Dodge, a Cummins connecting rod. There are push rods, uh, valve springs, just an all around solid build, and, and it works really, really well. Say so 20,000 miles, trouble free. He's been towing, racing, and, uh, we're hoping we can get some more mileage out of this with the, with the new head. Anyway, let's get this thing rolling the dyno and um, see what kind of power it makes. All right, so in this run, we're going to be monitoring a few things. We have on the dyno run, we're, our dyno is going to monitor a peak boost. It's going to monitor interstage boost. That's boost from the big turbo to the small turbo. We're also going to monitor drive pressure so we can compare all these numbers on the dyno graph to the, after they put the head on there. So all that's going to show up here on the, on the dyno graph and I think we're ready. We're going to get this thing started and make some power, see what kind of power we have and, and then we'll get started. Here we go.
window, smoke in here. All right. So we lost the exhaust pipe off and we filled my shop full of smoke. Uh, the shop guys opened up the big bay doors. I'm sure the lighting changed, but we're trying to clear out the smoke. Um, but let's go get the dyno graph and go check out the results. Here we go. All right. So peak power on this run was 894 horsepower. It's huge. Uh, 1,938 foot-pounds of torque. That's big, big torque. Peak power was at 2,800 RPM. Uh, let's go to the other graph here. Myers running the machine for me. We're going to look at the, the boost and the drive. So the yellow line is the torque curve. So peak torque happened at what RPM? Let's go to RPM here for a second. So engine speed. So peak torque happened at 1930 RPM. Peak power is the green line. That happened at what RPM? It actually happened at 23 something. That's the 1930. Oh, I'm looking at the torque number. Yeah. <laughs> so 1930 foot pounds of torque. Peak torque happened at 2320 RPM. What was peak power RPM? That was 2800. So that's interesting. Okay, let's go to peak boost. What was total boost, our highest total boost number? 79. Did we register 79? So he sees 80, 95 on the street, but that's in Arizona, low elevation, lower elevation. We're at 6,000 feet here. So you're gonna see a drop in boost, plus from the dyno. So 80 pounds in the boost here. Drive pressure, what was the peak drive pressure? Drive pressure is 107. Drive pressure follows RPM. If we kept running this thing up higher and higher RPM, the drive pressure would keep on climbing. So you can see it happened right at the, right at the top of the run. Right, I let off right after that. So 108 pounds of boost. What was the drive pressure at peak boost? That's what, or peak horsepower, sorry. That was right up there, wasn't it? It was 100, 107. Yeah, it just kept climbing. Interesting how at peak boost it was 80 to 100, so it kept driving. What about our interstage boost? What did we get there? Our peak was clear at the top, it just, right when I let off. Which that's going to because you let off. Yeah, that's true. So 39, 40. So 40 pounds interstage, 80 psi overall. So yeah, this thing's a monster. It's a this really clean, good running truck. Uh, it's making a lot of boost. I'm really curious to see what the twin, what the new ported head does. We see a drop in boost. Will we see a power increase? It's, we're pretty high already for this turbo setup. It's not like there's a lot left in the turbos, but there may be some. Let's see if we can get it out of it. All right, dyno's done. Let's get this thing off the dyno, get it over in the shop, and let's rip the head off this thing and see what it does with that new head back on. that in the shot? Have you guys ever called into a diesel shop only to be met with somebody who didn't really want to take the time to talk to you? Here at Power Driven Diesel, we have guys whose only job it is is to talk to customers, talk to people, to make sure they get the right parts for their truck the first time. We want to make sure your experience in buying diesel parts doesn't suck. We want it to be awesome. Give us a call. We want to talk to you. All right, the truck is back on the dyno, ready to go. We took the head off this thing, took the stock head off, put a ported head on. We actually made two changes besides just the cylinder head. 
First off, this thing had 60 pound valve springs in it. So they're floating. They're just, at this power level, there's no way they're up to the task. They did amazingly well. Can't complain, but like, if we're taking the head off, I'm not putting 60 pound valve springs back on this engine. So we went with a set of our street conicals for this build. Should work really well, not have valve float, and make, make me feel a lot better. The next thing he wanted was our new battery hold downs. Uh, this truck is beautiful. We have something beautiful or bling to put on it. Mike wants on this truck, so these are the battery hold downs are on this truck. Uh, you may notice we have some lines running out of the hood. That's our data logging. We're going to data log the same stuff we did last time. High pressure boost, low pressure boost, and also the drive pressure. Those will be on the graphs. We can really, when we overlay the last graph with the new graph, we can compare all that stuff and see what this head has done for this, for this uh, truck. Uh, turbos again are the Borg Warner 362. Uh, with a Borg Warner 476 SXE, and that's with the 87 millimeter turbine, not the big turbine 476. This is a kind of a towing friendly setup that actually makes massive power. So anyway, we're gonna put this on, on the dyno now. It's on the dyno. Let's go run it and see what it does. And here we go. All right, runs over. Felt pretty good from here. Let's go see what it looks like on the dyno. All right, so Will showed up a minute ago, so I had to throw a mic on him. He hasn't even seen the screen behind him. I had the power numbers up. So I was, it's always fun to guess power numbers. Me and Will have been doing this for years. Will's kind of like the brains behind this head, kind of got it all worked over, kind of got his work on the flow bench. So I'm kind of, it'll be fun. So before. So, so I wasn't even here for the first The runs. first dyno, it did 800 and... 94 horsepower, 894. And it was, that peaked out about 79 pounds of boost. Then we took the head off, put our stage one head on. And so now the question is, how much power do you think it picked up and how much boost did it lose? I think the best we've ever seen a turbo do is about eight horsepower per pound of air moved. That 476 capped at 120 supposedly. So 960 to me would be like if everything was perfect. This is a 12 valve, they don't usually get to the Conrail levers level so i'm gonna guess 920. 920 so you think it picked up 30 horse 30, 34 yeah. 24. 920 is a 25 horsepower bump 25 is about all i would guess i think the boost should fall but i'm like knowing how choked up the factory exhaust i wonder if getting more flow out make the turbos run better mm -hmm. so i'm gonna say no change on the boost but it just picked up power 79, so 79. 79 pounds of boost and 920 is your guess what do you think torque did Peak torque was at 2300, give or take. So I'm not gonna go full, I'm gonna go right to 2000 even is my guess. I don't, I don't think I can go any higher than that. That scares me. All right, this is like, this is like so, all right, turn around, Will, turn around and look. Nine, oh, <laughs> <laughs> 965. 965? Look at that torque, dude, 2124. Wow. Yeah. 65, so it gained. 75, 70, 70. All right, so peak boost. Go to that blue dot right there. 76, we dropped three. Three pounds of boost drop. So that's, that's a bit, so, less, so three pounds less boost and drive pressure at peak power. No, that's peak boost. Go to peak, oh, peak power and peak boosters, the same spot. Interesting. Uh, so peak power came down. That's why the torque's so much higher. Yeah. So peak power happened earlier. So, 100, so same drive, 109. We were 110 before, no, 107. Right there, what's the peak drive up there though? Yeah, go to the red dot up here. So we're, so we're getting more out, more's coming out. So what that's telling me, because the drive pressure's measured in the manifold, yep. the restriction wasn't the turbine wheels on the turbo. I mean, some of it is, that's why there's drive pressure there. There was more restriction in the head, because now that the head flows better, it's down the there's, turbos. there's more pressure backed up in front of the turbine yeah, wheels. Exactly. So the turbos are definitely driving harder. Yep. So I'll bet you if we had a turbo shaft speed sensor, it's the turbos up. are spinning faster. Yep. We're moving more CFM into the motor, but it's making less boost because it's getting through it better. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But that, wow. So, <laughs> so 965 horsepower. So, so Papa Turbo's happy? <laughs> <laughs> anyway guys, if you have any questions, just call the shop. If you guys want to help you out, make sure the right parts for your car. Uh, subscribe, all that good stuff, like and, and if follow. If you want more power, get a stage two head because this was the stage one. Yeah, and you're good. <laughs> but it's 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 a very viable option. Oh, huge! It's awesome. <laughs> all right, thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.